welcome to this video from in 28 minutes thanks for helping us provide awesome learning experiences to more than 300,000 learners across multiple platforms udemy safari and pact let's welcome our lead instructor rangarao karanam hi in 28 minute welcome to this video where we'll be talking about how you can take the first steps from a monolith to a microservice so you have an application with monolithic architecture or large application and you'd want to start moving towards a microservices architecture we'll discuss about the basics of a monolith architecture the basics of microservices architecture and we will give you a few ideas on what you can do to take your first steps now if you have any experience with working with monolith applications then you would know that these projects are released every few months i mean you're not talking about releasing every week every day like organizations like facebook twitter they release multiple times every day and in comparison these monolith applications are released to production once every few months these monolith applications have large amount of features and functionality they are huge i have worked with monolith applications which have more than 50 team members working for one application i'm just talking about the development team and you'd see typically in monolith applications that debugging problems is a big challenge changing anything in how things are done like whether you are talking about technology whether you're talking about bringing in new processes is next to impossible so what is a monolith application typically the way i would think about it is any application which is very difficult to take to production for which you have to do a lot of effort before you take it to production that's a monolith application for me so typically when we are talking about a monolith application it looks like this you have a large database and you have a large application which is talking to it what does microservices architecture brings in the microservices architecture says instead of building large applications try and build a number of smaller microservices so instead of thinking of this kind of an architecture start thinking about this kind of an architecture instead of building one movie application which provides the entire stuff behind a specific website build a number of services so you have a movie service you have a customer service you have a review service a booking service and a fair calculation service and as you can see in here the databases are also separated out so you have smaller databases and you achieve functionality through the interaction between these microservices so these microservices talk to each other and they provide the functionality for you while microservices architecture looks very very easy from a high level implementing this kind of an architecture is really really complex there are a lot of important decisions to make what are the boundaries of each of these microservices so you have one large application so it's easy you put every functionality into that but when you break it up how do you break it up what should go into an individual microservice what should go into the database which is related to that specific microservice how do you have these microservices communicate with each other so there are a lot of challenges which you have to face when it comes to microservices architecture let's look at a few of them one of the important ones is when we are talking about building tens fifteens of microservices you cannot spend a month setting up the frameworks right so you have to be really quick so you need to be able to create microservices on the fly the second important thing is if i'm having 15 20 microservices i would need to take this live right so i would want to take all these microservices live and it's a lot of effort and that's why you'd want to automate everything you'd want to automate your build you'd want to automate your deployment you need to have automated monitoring to find out if something is down so there's a lot of automation that is required when you move to a microservices architecture as we discussed earlier bounded context is a very important challenge how do you decide what is the boundary of each of these microservices what does a microservice do how do you decide that in my experience what i found was deciding this at the first go is very very difficult this is something which evolves 
so you need to keep an eye on it so at the start you think okay these are the microservices i would need this is the responsibility for each of these microservice but over a period of time that would evolve as you understand more about your business and your specific needs now configuration management is also a challenge managing configuration for one application is difficult right so the configuration changes from environment to environment configuration is typically which database you talk to which external service you need there might be a lot of other configuration which varies between each of your environments so the same application will have different configurations in different environments and now we are thinking about hundreds of microservices and each of these microservices has different configuration so managing the configuration for all of them is going to be a challenge the other things are the reason why you go to a microservices architecture is to be able to do auto scaling when you have more load you would want to be able to have more instances when you have less load you would want to have less number of instances that's called auto scale up or dynamic scale up and scale down and you need to have all the infrastructure in place to be able to use that facility so what we are looking at right now are some of the important challenges with respect to microservices architectures you might be wondering we talked about monolith applications and we directly jumped into challenges with microservices architectures why did we do that why didn't we talk about the advantages of microservices and then jump into the challenges of microservices the reason is because you are looking to migrate from monolith application to a microservices application architecture and that's not easy i just wanted to highlight the important challenges which are really involved in taking a monolith architecture and making it a microservices architecture the important thing that you need to realize is this is not something which you can do in a few months you cannot say i have a monolith application and i would stop working on it and i'll make it a microservices architecture in a few months that's not how it would's going to work getting a microservices architecture right is years of work it's a number of years of work so it's kind of a journey so it's not a switch but it's kind of a journey so you would have the monolith application and a part of it in microservices architecture running in parallel for a long time so it's not a simple journey it would be involving a lot of complexities especially because designing a monolith architecture is very different from designing a microservices architecture the thought processes are very very different so now you would want to move from monolith to microservices what should you start doing one of the most important decisions that you need to make when you are moving from a monolith to a microservices architecture is why why do you want to move to microservices architectures do you want to adapt new technology faster is that the reason why you are moving to microservices or you would want faster release cycles is that why you are moving to microservices or you would want to auto scale you would want to move to the cloud and get infrastructure whenever you need it your load on the applications is varying so you want to make sure you would want to auto scale with load which of these is the important reason why you would want to switch to a microservices architecture you need to be very very clear about it the approach you would use would differ based on which of these factors is the most important thing for you let's say you would want to start adapting new technology in that kind of situation what you can start doing is you can start with designing microservices around the next important features that you would start building so when we are having a monolith application there would be a lot of requests to change stuff add features so whenever you would want to add new technology you would want to try new technology the best place to try that would be in the new features that you are creating so the approach in that situation would be to start off with trying these new technologies and implementing microservices architectures for the new features how do you design the database how do you make sure that the data is shared between these two things like the old monolith application as well as the new things that you are creating in the microservices architecture so you need to make those decisions but the important thing is you can start trying out stuff with the new features you are developing the second reason might be faster release cut 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 
The second reason might be that you want faster release cycles. Your business is not happy with the pace at which we are releasing stuff to production. If that's the case, the most important thing that you need to identify is what are the parts of the application where there are frequent changes. You need to identify why are we having a lot of releases, which parts of the application are very, very dynamic. Once you identify that, then you can design a solution where you can take out the moving parts and create microservices around them. That would help us make sure that whenever there's a change, you just need to release that specific microservice. The last reason might be to scale with the cloud. If that's the reason, then you need to start thinking about what is involved in taking your monolith application and putting in the cloud. So start doing research, start doing POCs around trying to put your application in the cloud. What are its dependencies? Which of the dependencies are important to break? What are the problems that you are having when you actually try and make your application cloud native? So the approach that you would take to the journey from microservices to monoliths is a little different depending on what your aim is. It's not going to be the same journey for everybody. However, the most important thing is whatever microservices that you create, you need to make sure that you have all these things in place. The most important thing is having a lot of automation around all your processes. Two is having the facility for auto scaling. The third thing is to have great visibility. Right? You need to understand what's happening behind these microservices. In this quick video, we looked at how you can move from a monolith architecture to a microservices architecture. We said it's not going to be an easy journey. It's going to be a journey of a few years, maybe decades. And the most important thing that you need to establish is why do you want to move to a microservices architecture? And the path you would take would be different based on why you would want to move to a microservices architecture. In 28 minutes is providing awesome learning experiences to 300,000 learners across platforms like Udemy, Safari Online and Pact. We have clogged million hours of learning in the last few months. The question is, what do you want to learn next? We are building solutions to help programmers at all levels. You can learn programming with our awesome courses on Java, Python, and JavaScript. You can learn full stack development with REST APIs and microservices with a wide range of frameworks like Spring Boot, Node.js, React, Angular, and Spring Cloud. We have 200 plus videos to help you start your journey from a programmer to a software architect. We have videos to help you learn frameworks, industry trends, including things like microservices, learn the best practices in architecture, design, and code quality. Thanks for watching. Keep learning in 28 minutes.